What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 81 of the Left Coast Leafs podcast. I'm Sean Orr, joined by my good buddy Trevor Bast. You are about to crush a fucking hot I'm dog. Crushing it, a dog. it is the Phil the Thrill Kessel podcast. I don't remember when we started numbering our podcasts, but this is probably the one we've been kind of looking forward to a lot, right? Like, yeah. 93 is going to be a big one for us. 69 was pretty big. 69, yeah, we really brought out all the stops for that one. But this is the Phil Kessel one, and I'm going to bite into a hot dog right now in honor of Phil. I can't have a hot dog. You can't. You're on a program. It sucks. And I respect that. No hot dog or beer. I obviously don't respect it because I'm crushing a hot dog in front of you, so I can't respect it that much. This is the worst decision of my life. How many games do you think Phil Kessel played for the Leafs? Over 400? Mm Mm-hmm. 446. Okay. And 181 goals. 213 assists. Underrated passer, hey? No, he was a good passer. So 394 points in 446 games. Almost a point a game. Basically a point a game player. Minus 80 for what that's worth. (laughs) (laughs) Minus 80. You know what? For I liked Phil. Like, he could put the puck in the net. And Mm -hmm. Phil would be perfect for the team we have right now. Yeah. Uh, oh, he would be. He, he he would be kind of like a Nylander hybrid, no, Nylander Kapanen hybrid, mm-hmm. where you have the shot of Nylander, but you have the speed of Kapanen kind of built into one. Where, uh, but a lot of Phil's goals though were off the rush. Like he was not a cycle player. <laughs> one one thing that he can do that none of our goal scorers can do is not break stride, shoot off that back foot. Awesome. As hard as he could. I don't know if he can do that thing. He can do anything. He can do a lot of things. <laughs> but uh, I put out a poll. What uh, what will Moss and Matthews get up to in in um, at Augusta? Yeah. Did you see that one? No, I didn't see that one. I said, what what's more likely to come out of the video surveillance from Matthews? I said, uh, uh, a golf cart incident. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, a hotel lobby incident or a three-way with Tiger? <laughs> Nothing. He better be on the straight and narrow. And then, and then somebody somebody said um, he's not going now. Someone replied to the tweet saying he's not going now, but I never heard that. They said Masters reported that. I'm not sure. So then I should have changed it to which Leaf was more likely to join the Mile High Club <laughs> on the way to the Masters or something like that. But, uh, oh well, I was trying to have some fun in these dark, dark days. Well, Eleven days, no hockey. So yeah, I know. And then the the ones, the ones that have been uh, preceding the break have not been all that much fun. No, it's it's been a bad, poor stretch. <clears throat> so we have a beer from Liquor Planet. Thank you, Wyatt. Beautiful sponsor. Um, you can't drink. No. So it's a double tall can situation too, which really sucks. Will you drink both of them tonight? I'm gonna give one to Reg, unless right. you want to take one home for one year. No. When you're able. So, uh, <laughs> that's just mean. Okay. This is a repeat brewery, the Atomic Joker from Bridge Brewing Company. Okay. They're in Vancouver. Um, it's a cherry porter. Ooh. Oh. That's like a meal in itself. <laughs> that's a hot dog on, that's a, like, that's a meal on top of a hot One dog. One thing I, I'm thinking though, I will have to go back and try the beers though, just for the beer of the year pod at the end of the year. Yeah. Like I'll have to get a like, because I think the beer from last like it looked delicious last week. It was really good. Yeah, like yeah, I know that. Yeah, you're right. That was a good one. That was hard. So this is a limited release from Bridge, and they're out of um, North Vancouver, BC. This American style porter is dark brown in color with notes of caramel, coffee, and is slightly nutty. The Atomic Joker finishes with a fruity tone from the addition of cherries. Dark, highly energetic. And nuts, <laughs> just like any good Joker should be. Those nuts get Unlike you, eh? Jared Leto. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> good reference on the end of that, eh? Thanks. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna crack this. How's that program going? It's good. Yeah. You- did a bunch of meal prep yesterday. You do the Sunday night meal prep? Yeah, just that's, like a, that's money. Like a bunch of stuff that during the week I can quickly like. Like put together like in half an hour where yeah it's it's I don't know the prep uh, it makes it doable with this and no I'm it it's good that's good it's a porter it's, it's such a dark beer like a porter. I probably wouldn't like that beer actually do you think like 
since the Leafs haven't won the cup in 52 years and they'll probably never win it again, it doesn't really matter that we gave up Sagan and Hamilton for, for, uh, Kessel. I'm, I'm past it, that. It wouldn't have mattered. Did you see that the NHL.com said that game seven between Leafs Boston in 2013 was the game of the decade? <laughs> How fucking ridiculous is that? You know, I, I heard, I, actually, I heard a, a really good rant on, uh, I wanted to hear Steve Dangle's take on it. So I listened to a bit of his podcast this morning. I don't typically because it's just so long. And um, like he, he nailed, they nailed it that, that like, the NHL just profits off the back of the Toronto Maple Leafs because they're the most relevant franchise in the league. 100%. So here's this, here's that. Then they announced the freaking um, event of the decade. Did you see that today? No. They announced the event of the decade. Outdoor game in yeah, Leafs, uh, Detroit. Yeah, Michigan. Yeah. At the um, big house? At the big house. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Like, there's been, but like, why? like just, game there's so, of the decade. So, like, game seven in the, for the Stanley Cup. Um, like there's been well, you some saw epic my, series. Uh, did you see my my tweet? I, I referenced that. Uh, you tweet a lot, so it's hard. To keep up. Well, I I referenced that game last year in in uh, the San Jose the, the Vegas series game with the, seven with the Cody Eakin situation. Yeah, that was like they scored five goals and came back and won that game. That was fucking nuts. Right, like that was an insane game. But so it was four one. There, yeah, there was Stanley Cup game winning goals in this decade. Like Kane, like nobody knew it went in. It was kind of a weird one against Philly that time. But yeah, anyway, yeah, it, 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 that just stung a little bit. No, I, I'm there. I think it's uh, it's in, an interesting selection uh, mm. for game of the decade. But uh, eh, it, it is what it is. You know what? I always had this conspiracy theory back in the early part of the decade. That Boston got so many favors, so much favor because Gregory Campbell played on the team and Colin Campbell was in such a position of power. Like when they 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 would just mug everybody, they got the benefit of all the calls, they won that cop, and then just sort of continued on. They just sort of always seemed to get the calls. I don't know, like if there's it's in in the refs' heads, if there's they, any they sort also of, have good hockey players though. Yeah, but they just had they got they have so much fucking good fortune but like you, you draft a player like Pasternak Ber, like the way that Bergeron has like not aged at all Marchand takes off after he signs a, a big contract where now his contract is like he could be getting paid way more yeah. like the team's lucky like Char like the whole everything that's a it's a great organization and it's True. one where it, it sucks for us because they're, they're a good hockey team it happens to be our hill to climb so it hurts all the time. It's like uh, we need to have that moment when uh, Vancouver beat Chicago in the first round to mm -hmm. finally get past Chicago, and that's when they went to the run of the cup. We need to have that moment, that yeah. watershed, holy fuck, we did it moment. Slay the dragon. Caps had to do it. Do you know who scored that goal in overtime against Chicago? Ooh. Nope. Alex Burrows. Did he? Yeah. That wasn't the stanchion goal, was it? That was a big goal in that series, that was but the, it wasn't the that stanchion. That was the game the BX, seven uh, uh, OT Burroughs goal. Mm, crazy. But uh, that so, was good hockey. That was great. That hockey. was great hockey. That was like I I've seen the Sedins play live a, a handful of times. Mm -hmm. I've never seen two players play like that before, where they just the ability to hold on to the puck. And know where each other are going to be, and yeah. it, it was incredible. That patience, incredible. Their puck control, passing, vision without he actually see, like it was is amazing. Because even you, you can see players on our team that maybe play well together. Let's, let's just say, let's say Tavares and Marner from last year, but they still, they still didn't have that patience that the Sidians always had. Like they, they'd give it that one or two extra seconds. Just, yep, they were just so in tune. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, but Frederick Anderson, he is in one of his uh, downward spirals right now. I would see probably his worst stretch as a leaf. It, this happens, though, all the time with him. He's up and down. Like, it's it's cons it's constant where he's like yeah. a, a 940 goalie and then he's a 900 goalie. And then he's back. Like, he's he's never steady. He's always no. on never or steady, he's not on. And he's not on right now because that game on Saturday, like, say what you like. You were texting all like the 
the bad D zone coverage or, or whatever. Yeah. But those were if he's on his game, he stops five of the first six goals. <laughs> like yeah. like that one that backhander across that bat of the air. Like that's lucky. But like that's lucky. He he the, stops the sod goal I thought was a shooter's goal. He stops those know. usually though. He can. So this year, like every year, he's had either a nine seventeen or a nine eighteen save percentage with the Leafs. This year, he's pretty big sample size already. He's nine oh nine. But so like the season earlier, in general, though, is not he was going over well. nine twenty. Yeah. Like, but now he's just been on such a downward trajectory. So, how should we feel about that? Like personally, towards Freddie, because I've been really torn because, like. I've, I've I kind of defended Riley when people were all over him for mistakes and like R D is fucking hurting right yeah. now. <laughs> I, I I feel personally that I had one bullet this year, and I used it on Babcock, and I I feel reluctant to sit. You there also and started just, to try and say that John Tavares is washed up. You know what? He's not washed <laughs> up, but he needs to put this team on his back a little bit right now too. I need to see some more of J T right now. <laughs> but back to Freddie. Um, I just don't feel like I have any bullets to 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 shoot on guys like Freddie or O'Reilly or breaking down any a scapegoat for every goal, a scapegoat for every loss. I just don't feel like I have that in my in my toolbox right now because I used it on Babcock and we're living with the consequences of a transition right now too. Yeah, like if you look at just Keith's record, it, it's phenomenal. It's great. Babcock's record is what's hurting us. Um, yes. It makes me uh, hope and want Dubis to pull a trigger on a move for either a defenseman or a goalie. We're talking like a, a little, um, the talk now amongst the insiders, Hockey Night in Canada, mm-hmm. is around uh, Georgiev, the Rangers backup, or the, the whole weird situation they have right now. Yeah. But that's where if you're looking at that guy and you're like, this could be a goalie of the future. Like, do you look at pulling a uh, bigger trade to get that player? Mm-hmm. And I think it's something where I wonder now if Dubas is sitting there the next 11 days being like, Frederick, we have one more year of him under contract. Then he's a UFA. He's he's 31 now. He's going to be yeah. 32 when he's a UFA. Do you go out and make that deal? Unless you think Wool or, or Scott are the goalies of the future, but even then, are they we are they still a year away from being three years away? We, like, we don't know, right? Exactly. And I mean, so, they're not Carter Hart, right? So that's where, like, a goalie like um, Georgiev, Georgiev, do you, you do you move a guy like Kapanen? You know what I think that a lot of the fascination in our market with Georgiev is that he's burned us twice, and so we remember that. But the guy's only played 60 games in the NHL. He looks good, though. Like, he does look good. I mean, his sample size is not huge. And is it is it is it one that you would give up more than a AHL player? And a, Brocco? And a, yeah. You know, here's, here's, here's my Brocco stance. He obviously is a very flawed player. And because he's been traded... He's been a part of 500 internet trades in the last three years. If he was, if he was like this great player that was just unfortunately buried on the wrong wing of a great deep team, someone would have scooped him up by now. But the amount of guys that have been called up from the AHL this year, it, it's telling that he's not been one of them yet. Yeah. And I wonder if they sit there and they look at the the Nick Robertson, the second round draft pick from last year, as yeah. hey, is this the new like? Is it, does he? replace Brocko on the prospect depth chart. Right. Smaller winger winger player that can put uh, the puck in the net. Mm-hmm. So I wonder where you where you get to with Brocko. Like it's mm-hmm. it's one where I, I don't think you or I can comment on him because we haven't seen him play. No. And it's not we only look at the I mean, stat his, sheet. His, his HL numbers are good. No. His, the highlights of his assists are good. But it's just, what else, what's missing? It's telling that they have not called him up. Yeah. Because they call up a number of other players. Why hasn't he been one of them? Or no one's um, offered up a, a D-man that they had too many of because they really wanted him. Yeah. I just, with Riley being out for minimum two months, we don't know where Muzzin's at. Hopefully he's back after. The, I'm assuming he's back because he's going fucking golfing at the Masters this week. Yeah. But um, Muzzin back, but... I think 
if we made a move for a backup goalie or a D-man, I would, as long as it's a hot, like a, someone of something of substance, I'd be willing to part with a Kapanen or Andreas Johnson mm-hmm. um, because of the emergence of a Engvall, Engvall. The, the depth that we now have and the potential for it to, to flourish. I just so. wish we knew what was going on with Mikhaev before we traded any forward depth. Like that's yeah. such a wild card, hey? Yeah. He, he, Just with that, with that injury, I think we need to treat it like he's done for the year. So, do you do you think like do you think if we had our full team and and Pittsburgh has pretty much set a precedent where everyone needs to shut up about their injuries because everybody gets them. Nobody has had them worse than Pittsburgh. And they're just still chugging along. Yeah. So I don't want to make excuses saying, well, if we had our full team, because our goalie still isn't stopping the pucks, he should stop. The difference, though, is Pittsburgh didn't change their coach mid-year. No. And they have a coach who they're familiar with, who's been with the team. That's so true. It, that's, it's a much different scenario. Because where... I, I feel that if we had if we had all hands on deck, I think it'd even make a difference for Anderson right now. I think it's it, it's just so... This year's been so weird with everything that's happened, with the coaching change, with the injuries, with the call ups. It's just you can't you can't put yeah. this in a nice present and wrap a bow on it. There's no, no. no way to explain it. We just need to keep plugging away at it. I think does we need to get into the playoffs, punch yeah. our ticket, and then anything can happen. We you, can yeah. I think I would the one team I don't want to play in the first round is Tampa. That's like I know. That's like the number one. That like, would be don't get Tampa in the be, first round. That would probably be the the Tampa will, will probably get the first wild card when things shape up. Washington might get this the lot the second wild card team. Yeah, I would. Um, I would rather play Boston than Tampa in the first round. Yeah, this year. They, they, I think their wagon status is back a little bit. Oh, yeah. So we've had. So it's funny because the last two years we've just complained on the podcast and it's been true. Like you sat here for the last half of the last two seasons saying there's nothing to talk about. And I've tried desperately to generate things to talk about so we could have a podcast. But this year we are, like we're going, we're in a play. We're truly in a playoff battle now. We're not yep. locked into third place on December 25th. But like last year at this, like in December, like it was over. We were being the and third the, team. The year before too. Like it was like legitimately like mm-hmm. there's nothing to talk about like we're going to be the third team we're playing Boston and it's yeah. and then they were kind of stale going into the playoffs a little bit yeah. so you know I mean I, but interesting to see um, one th- interesting comment this week made or not this week I guess in the weekend um, post game post Saturday. game from Sheldon Keefe using the word immature to mm-hmm. describe the group saying he felt the group was immature in Florida really interesting comments because Obviously, they've lost 8-4, but does immature mean on the ice or off the ice? Do the boys go down and party? Um, obviously, coming into Saturday night, uh, Chicago, uh, they've been good as of late, but not in the playoffs right now. And clearly, they're looking towards the next week off because they're talking about the trips they're going on yeah. and what they're doing. And they lay an absolute dud against Chicago at home. Yeah, I think I I listened to the... I listened to the clip again. I just was happy to listen to Overdrive when you walked in from today, and they did play that clip. And it sounded like he was trying to to frame it in the context of the way they played the game. Almost like he was trying to avoid saying what he wanted to say so that he just wouldn't start like a big shitstorm. Because yep. I believe he means they went to Florida, they gave the extra day to holiday, they didn't respond. They come back home. They got the uh, the the buy coming up after the Chicago game. The media doing their jobs, pokes and pokes and pokes them. What are your plans? What are your plans? Yeah. They start talking about all the things you're doing. They're checked out. And I they, texted they were you. Checked They're out. checked out. Yeah, and I think I think that means like that's a big deal. And I think that's exactly what Keith I means. Think like these guys need to grow up off the ice. Going back, if he could change it, you don't go that extra day in Florida. Probably don't not. go for a day on the beach because. It it sent the wrong message now. Yeah. Because at the time we were rolling, the mm-hmm. team was playing well, and it just 
it, it set us down a, a bad path yeah. where we lose there. We do have a bounce back game, but then we lose to Calgary uh, in OT. Yep. Uh, and then just get shit kicked by Chicago. Yeah. And they're, I mean, they're not getting any more of those. And, and off again, days. though, we talked about it, though, like a lot of bad goals from Freddie. Mm hmm. Like they're like they're just bad all around, and yeah. for for me it's I like the comments by by Keith. Um, I wish we weren't going into like a, a week off break or now eleven days because they're off for eleven days now and then they play the Monday after the All Star mm -hmm. weekend. Yeah. So it's like one of the one of the one of the players required to be back for practice. Like they're basically gonna be, and you know they're partying hard right now too. So like if, they're yeah. they're full on like foot on the pedal, given her. Because if you're <laughs> if you're Muzzin coming back, he's going to play at the uh, the mass like at so, Augusta this week. So he he's coming off an injury. He, he's not going to get a practice in before his first game back. He's golfing though. He's golfing, and so I would think that he's probably going to like once the mandatory five day break is when they're not allowed to be at the team facility. But then it's the all star break. But they, they can be around for the all star break. I bet you Muzzin's putting in work that weekend. Are you sure? I hundred percent guarantee you Muzzin's putting in but no, work. But no, is that a rule though you I thought they have to they're on a break though. I don't think that I don't think that but, but if if the, the five day break is mandated, the all star break So you if can your employer you gives you vacation time, do you go to work? I think <laughs> I think I, I think Muzzin's a pro and I think it's all part of his rehab. <laughs> Fair. So I think that's uh, that's where where we're at with that. You know what? It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting um, to see. Maybe the All Star weekend for Anderson will, will help him. Um, but a little bit of a lull here mm -hmm. um, for for content wise. But I, I hope we, we I hope some something has to happen. There, there has to be a shoe to fall. What do you What do you think? Like, what kind of conversations with other GMs is Dubas having during this downtime? Well, what's his number one? Pro what's his number one priority? And what would you like to see? All right, all right. Goaltender or D? Top yeah. four D. So, this is this is out there, but, and and the the two month Riley injury really really puts a a wrench in in this plan that I'm I have. But I just I just think Barry should be on the trade block. Or he should. I think he should be listening to offers the from Western Conference teams yeah. for Barry. The the issue with him though is that his contract is so good right now because it's it's half of what it's supposed to be. But all that aside, all, that but almost, you can't that's bring almost in, irrelevant after no, no, the trade it, deadline. It's relevant because you can't bring in a player of the same sub like of the same contract like right. that that uh, and unless level you're, of unless you're also unless you're also doing. And Andreas Johnson or um, something like that. Unless you're trading him for like pieces, like because you're getting. Yeah. But the thing is, though, like, he, like who do we have? Like, because like, Riley's out, Muzzin's been out. Like, we can't get rid of D. No, D you, that, you that played get, in the NHL. You can't get rid of Barry now because no. Of but I just I just find that the more the season goes on, Riley and Barry are doing the same, are capable of doing the same thing. Yeah, skating and. and and I think you, you, if we could get another Muzzany kind of guy the, the, to replace Barry, then that would be, I think that would be more preferable. Roman Pollock? <laughs> I don't know. Like, would you, would you trade uh, Ron Hainsey straight up for Cody CC right now? What's Hainsey's contract? It's like 3.5, but it's got another year on it. Oof. <clears throat> Yes. That's not what Kyle, you, we yeah. would, but like, that's kind of funny how we think back now, right? But like, Marinson was tragic. Marinson's bad. Marinson was absolutely tragic. <laughs> Cody Cece is tragic. He's a, like, he's a negative asset, Cody Cece. Like, he contributes nothing. <laughs> like, he, all he does is fill a roster spot. He gets paid 4.5 million. Yeah, he does. But I mean, like, there's, there's some real bad defensemen on this team right now, and like, and I, I I put Tyson Berry in that category defensively, right? And I just I don't know I don't know what the answer is because like I was I was debating with someone on Twitter, like if we offer up Kasperi Kapanen straight up for Matt Dumba, let's say, why would Minnesota become instantly worse of a team? by making a trade right i mean yeah because they are that that's what you're dealing with if you're asking a team to give up a top four defenseman for our 
fortunate depth on forward, you're asking him to become worse. So that guy's not walking through the door unless we overpay for him, right? So well, that's, and it's the, tough. The whole notion of training Nylander is out the door because he is like a yeah. top player. But right you know, now. you know what, you know what the you know what the new like all, all the kind of like the anti Nylander people who have been saying trade him because he's garbage are now saying trade him while his value is high. The, the thing is though, like I think you Dubas should seriously consider though a when when Columbus made the trade of uh, Ryan uh, Johansson for Seth Jones. Yes. Like if you can get a elite young defenseman, yeah. Like look at pulling that trigger. I'm surprised that a team like because uh, his Na- contract's Nashville, great now. I'm surprised a team like Nashville and Toronto haven't got together because their needs are so what the other team has lots of, right? Like Nashville's starving for guys who can score. Leafs are starving for depth on the back end. Anything now, the the back Nashville end. got a bit less deep when they got rid of Subban and that, but they still have a guy like Dante Fabro, some good young prospects. I mean, you're not going to get, well, you might get Ryan Ellis. I don't know, right? Like, I don't know but what like, they're willing you, to give up. You don't want a guy like Ryan Ellis that's going on that curve going down now. No. Like, if you're trading a top player, you're looking, like, it needs to be like a, like, similar in age, a good contract and that directory is going up because Nylander is only going up right now. But I don't think we're looking at anything beyond a three-year window right now. Like if you can, if a well, guy no, it's, it's a four-year window. Yeah. Well, if a guy's in his peak for the next three years though, you got to, you grab him, yeah. right? As long as his contract isn't seven, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like if you can get a 28 year old with a three-year contract, you know, I think you, you might want to jump Fair. on that guy. Right. So, yeah, so um, you haven't crushed the entire hot dog yet. No, I mean I've been talking, you know, and I, I, um, I I'll, you're just trying I'll, to I'll rub it into it. me. <laughs> just fucking it's cold, making me sweat. I'll, I'll have it. A couple housekeeping ish, um, items here before Issues. we sign off. Um, Christine from the Regal Beagle. Yeah, she messaged me today, and she's going to be in Victoria next week, and she wants to watch the Nashville game at Fifth Street. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to, I'm going. So what day is that? That's on Monday, five o'clock game. So it gives us okay. a bit more time after work too. Cool. And so anybody that wants to go down to that and uh, hang with Christine and us and, uh, and I don't think we'll make a podcast out of it, but just, you know, go and just enjoy a game. Right. Cool. And earlier in the year, I got to get this guy's name, right? I was mess- messaging on Instagram with a guy in Ontario, and he wanted a hat. So I sent him a hat, and he was going to send me some Ontario craft beer. So I sent him the hat. The hat took a ridiculously long time to get there, like two months. And then his beer never, ever made it. And so today in the mail, I get this package. And on opening night at, at the Scotiabank Center, they had these leaf scarfs that were hanging over the seats for everybody. And Morgan Watson sent me one of the scarfs. Very cool. So hopefully he kept one for himself and stole one off someone else's seat to nice send me. Nice addition to the pod room. Yeah. Yeah. Nice addition to the pod room. So thank you, Morgan, in Rousseau, Ontario. You know where that is? No. Heard of it? No. I have to look it up. <laughs> and he sent us a nice note too. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Morgan. That was really nice of you. So, by week, are we going to do anything on the weekend with the All-Star game? I play it by ear. Yeah. It's it's kind of goofy. I'm actually looking forward to the women's three-on-three. Three. So am That's I. That's a great be, addition. It's be awesome. Yeah. A good showcase for them. I mean, our stuff is kind of stale. Like, I don't really care about Ovechkin wearing a cowboy hat or... He's not going to the All-Star game. He's not going game. again. Yeah. That's, a, that's a veteran move. It's a veteran move. I think that's fine. That guy's a goal-scoring machine. I, you know what? I, I fucking dropped him from my pool this week. Because back he only, they, back they, only had, they only had two games, so I thought, okay, I, I'll pick somebody up that has four games this week, and he, the guy gets back to back hat tricks. Like, just so it's so Obi. It's pretty good. Yeah. So how do you rank the beer? Uh, the beer. Oh, the beer. A porter for me is definitely a Austin Matthews. Wow. Yeah, I like the dark beer. But could you actually sit there and crush like six of those? Ah, the, it's a crushability scale. See, that's why I got to have more. We have to more. We need more increments, and I'm working yeah. on that. It's just so heavy. Yeah, it is heavy. Um, 
Okay, so I, I'll give it a Hyman because I could probably do two of these and then I'd have to switch to gin and tonics. <laughs> Soft. <laughs> and, and, but, uh, that's, uh, that's, but it's a really good beer. Thank you, Wyatt. Bridge Brewing Company. Nice beer. Thanks, Maybe we have to go there next time we're in. Uh, uh, Sean, when are, you, when are you back officially on? February. Feb 1? No. It's, I don't, it's, it'll be a bit. Yeah, okay. A couple right. more weeks. We'll uh, we'll modify. Well, I saw that Heineken just put out a zero zero beer. Maybe we'll bring one of those for you next time. There's a number of rules. Oh, but you can't have sugar. Yeah. Yeah. No. Fuck, man. You're gonna you're gonna be ripped. <laughs> 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 All right. So enjoy the bye week. I'm just I'm not fucking tweeting about the Leafs this week. Yes, you. Are. I know I'm not. I'm gonna promote the podcast, and I might do some tennis tweets. Australian Open just started, but no, no, no stress tweets about the Leafs. All right. Go Leafs, go. Go Leafs, go. Thank you.